Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Grady, Pandemic Edition. And here's the co-host, Hi there. I know you're so excited. It's my husband's birthday, so we're going to be making him my grandmother's seaweed soup, which in Korean culture is the traditional birthday soup. It's called miyoko. Here we have a big hunk of beef. Um, that's really what gives mm. it that savory flavor. Oh, manji shimara. But we're going to get into the seaweed, which is going to be really exciting to watch. In Korean cooking, my mom and my grandma always taught me how important it is to bleed out the beef. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. You season it with garlic later, Maddie. And we're just going to let that sit for about 30 minutes. You'll actually notice that the water will start getting all red from the blood. So when you go to some Korean grocery stores, especially like the one that I go to, um, you'll see that there are about 20 different kinds of seaweed. Just get the one that has a picture of miyoko or the seaweed soup in it. That's really easy to know, right? This is actually pretty cool. Oh, it's cool. 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 Mm. Look at that, Chiana. Mia, Mia, Mia. Hey, Mia. Hey. Manjaba, manjaba. Let's go. Okay, So I'm gonna cut these about two inches. And we're going to soak this for about 30 minutes. And you'll see how much water it soaks up and it's going to start taking up the whole bowl. Yeah. So let me tell you why seaweed soup is the traditional birthday soup in Korean culture. When I had given yeah. birth to Maddie, my mom made vats and vats of seaweed soup. And not only was it just delicious because it's such a comforting soup, but it's supposed to also help with postpartum health. And so that's why to commemorate really motherhood, that's how it became a traditional birthday soup. So I think that's pretty cool because I think we tend to forget, you know, really like the pain and the, the I mean, just the shock of, becoming a mother, both physically and emotionally. Um, so I think that's really cool. Thank you, Maddie. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You can see that it still has its like hard twisted shape, but you see it actually opening up a little bit. Let me show you. I can never have enough garlic, so I'm gonna use this whole head of garlic, but it's a rather small head, right? So when I was pregnant with Maddie, I had a whole birth plan. I took this birthing class. Um, it gave me, I honestly, like a false sense of confidence, I would say. The thing was, Maddie didn't want to come out. She really just didn't. So I actually had her at like, what was it? Like it's the 41st week or so, and it was an induction. And I was in labor for about 30, was it 32 hours? It was really not a very fun or expected experience. Um, and then I suffered a birth injury, which I'm still recovering from. So the postpartum health period was really important. I needed to maintain like good health, good nutrition. It's culture, but it's also, it was just really nice that my mom made so much beautiful. And now for birthdays, you know, I made it for her. Oh, I made it for her first birthday. <laughs> Give it a loose crush. I'm going to show you quickly. The onion, I used to flank steak here just because that's what was available at H Mart. And in Astoria, I'm really lucky enough to live by this really cool butcher shop. So I'll usually go there and get a three pound just hunk of chuck roast. We're just gonna give this a rinse because I've noticed that if you don't rinse it, it has a really strong kind of briny 
iodine flavor and I don't like too much of it. So I always like to rinse it. It's a lot softer, but you can feel that there is still a little bit of bounciness. And the way I like to eat miyokuk, I like it super, super soft. And you fill it up with water. I always cook huge quantities just so that it can last me a few days. I'm gonna add a few sprinkles of these toasted sesame seeds. It makes all the difference. And a little pour of sesame oil. The one I use. And now we just wait. I'll be at the spa getting my mani pedi. Right. <laughs> Yay, it's ready. Mama. Mama. because it's your birthday, so we made miyokuk, you know, which you've had before. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is the miyokuk. Um, we're teaching our, um, our audience how to make the Korean birthday soup. Oh, yeah, So Yummy. this is for you. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, babe. Okay. Mm. <gasps> mm. So one of the first times that I had this, was way back in college when Caroline made this for my birthday. And um, I like Miyoko, but she made about five big buckets of this. <laughs> Just kind of dropped them off for me. And um, you know, I had it after having it about four or five days in a row for lunch and dinner. I kind of got sick of it and had to let some of those buckets go to waste. And that's a cardinal no in my book. You never throw out food. So I got so mad at him. And yeah, I mean, I still bring it up to this day. You better not throw this out. You better eat all of this. So you better eat all I'm of it. I'm not good for five buckets of meat, as good as it is. So here's the thing. You can freeze it. You can freeze it. And then when it thaws, you know, you just heat it up in the stove top and it's just as good. It really has that beefy flavor that I love. It's really savory and rich, but then the garlic just cuts into it with a little bit of sharpness, and I really love that contrast of flavor. And the seaweed, I mean, for me personally, I don't think it really has like a very strong flavor on its own. It really kind of takes up the, the flavor of the beef and the garlic. But what do you think? Do you think it has a strong flavor, the seaweed? I think it does. It tastes like the sea. <laughs> Yum yum. Good. Yay. Well, that's it for today. Um, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, um, have a good day. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday. Thank you. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Thank you.